I've been actually stacking three, which I never thought I'd do. I've had the shit. Here we go. Getting wiped out again. Afternoon, how are you doing everybody? Well, I'm over in Iceland for a week. Um, it's not a photography trip. We're actually here on holiday. This was one of uh, the things on Mel's bucket list to do. She's always wanted to come to Iceland and photograph the Northern Lights or see the Northern Lights. Um, but we're here for a week and what I'm going to try and do in this vlog is basically hop in and out whenever I can when I'm doing some photography and, and literally just make a vlog of it really. Um, it's not a photography trip so if I was to come to Iceland and do what I would say a photography trip I would probably just go to one area probably hire a car and that means that you can stay in that area you can wait for the best light whatever you can look out for compositions and then go back at certain times the issue that myself and Mel had is that we haven't actually flown for over 30 years um, and obviously not been to Iceland before so what we decided to do was do a trip where everything was more or less planned out for us which is what we're going to do so unlike me like normally um, you know if I go somewhere and it's say the Isle of Skye and everybody's going to the fairy pools I'll find something completely different to do because I don't want to go where everybody else is um, it's going to be difficult to avoid that on this holiday because we're actually going to these places and I might try and find some different compositions or sort of wander off if I've got time and, and try shooting things from a different angle or getting different shots but um, it's certainly going to be a, a bit of a test to try and do that on this holiday. But we've got a trip booked uh, to go and see the Northern Lights tonight and actually um, this weekend when we travelled um, there was a solar flare and there are, they are predicting that you'll see the Northern Lights in England. Um, and as we get to Reykjavik this afternoon, it's completely clear skies. So fingers crossed it could be a really good night. So that's kicking the trip off anyway. Anyway, I'll probably catch you later um, in the dark when we are hopefully photographing the Northern Lights. So uh, yeah, I'll catch up with you in a bit. Morning, how are you doing? Well, I didn't do any recording last night while we were out on our um, Northern Lights trip. A couple of reasons, really. Um, when we were going out there on the, the coach, the obviously wanted to maximise everybody's chances of seeing the Northern Lights. So if you stood there in a large group and people have got torches and things on, which I would have had to do if I was going to do any recording, otherwise you wouldn't have seen me. So I decided not to do any there. Um, we had some fantastic northern lights and the first thing the guide on the coach said to us as we were travelling out, basically they said we're going to the peninsula where the airport stands. Now obviously never having been to Iceland before, I did know that obviously when we were coming from the airport to the hotel, it's probably one of the most featureless areas on Iceland, it's quite flat. Um, and I knew I was going to be in trouble potentially photographically straight away. I knew that even more when they said um, we're going to a car park and you can't move from the car park so you know you can't take yourself off anywhere and you've got about 30 to 40 people all stood in a car park with quite a benign landscape in front of you and as you can see from these images there's nothing that stands out so we got some fantastic northern lights as you can see so it was a really nice dark sight, a tick for that but for me I would have wanted as a photographer to go somewhere even when they said we were going to that area I thought right if we're going down to the coast we can potentially get you know the curve of a bay with maybe some lights from a, um, a settlement or something uh, just to give me something to, to work with but obviously nothing there just a completely flat lava field really. Um, so uh, as, a, as a location to see the Northern Lights, it was a 10 out of 10. And obviously you're always um, don't know whether you're going to get the Northern Lights or not. And we, we struck really lucky there. But photographically, for me, probably a 2 or 3 out of 10. 
you know, you really need to get somewhere where, where you can um, sort of craft an image more. So if you've got some nice mountains in the background, maybe some water, maybe something to give it some scale, um, you know, that would have worked a lot better. But, you know, that's, that's what you, you know, when you're on a trip that is not specifically signed for designed for photography then that's the sort of thing that you're going to get so yeah just to make you aware 10 out of 10 for the actual northern lights 3 out of 10 for the photography location morning well we're out in a fairly noisy uh, Reykjavik harbour this morning um, first day here on Iceland and what we're going to do today is we're going on a whale watching trip and I think this is probably going to be my only opportunity to do some wildlife photography on this holiday so Fingers crossed. I've done wildlife uh, watching trips before on the Isle of Skye and on the Isle of Mull and I haven't actually, we've seen whales at a distance, uh, normally minke whales, but not really had an opportunity to get any images. So it'll be interesting to see how this is, goes. We're on this boat behind us, a lot bigger than the boats I've been on before. You can actually go on a lot smaller boats as well, which are like small ribs where You've got probably 12 people all more or less assigned to a seat. It's more or less not much bigger than a dinghy. Really fast boats that go out, but the only problem with those um, is that I think it's very difficult to move around on there. So, you know, you, if you're not in that position to get that shot, you can't move somewhere else. Whereas here with this one, obviously you've got freedom to move around all over the place. I've already decided I don't want to be on the top deck because I'm not, I don't like that view you get of looking down onto something, although if I'm at a level too low down, you don't spot the whales, so I'm going to sort of try and go halfway up and see how I get on with that, and uh, yeah, hopefully we'll see some whales, hopefully I'll photograph some whales, but you never know. So anyway, catch up with you later, I probably won't do any recording on the boat because I'll be too busy um, either trying to spot whales or trying to take pictures of them. So yeah, I'll catch up with you later. So it's day two of our Icelandic adventure and today we're on, I think we're going to see some lava caves or something. These are all organised trips and we've come to a, a bit of a waterfall, a bit of a cascade area. I'll put up on the screen what it is because I can't remember. Um, it's just been a bit of a frantic bus journey really this morning but I always find these really difficult because if I'm doing a, something like this myself I would be not where the roped off area is, if you see what I mean. I would go and find something like this off in the countryside and then I would get right down low to where I wanted to be. Obviously on this sort of thing you're restricted, but I found a, a bit of a composition here and I'll just show you around. You can only hear, obviously hear the water. So we've got a bit of a composition here. I like the autumn colors and I like the, this cascade is quite quiet compared to the rest of it. So. It's working reasonably well on the back of the camera. Um, what I've done, I'm using the magnetic filters. I don't know whether you saw the video I did probably two videos ago uh, with these KNF Concept magnetic filters. One of the things it has enabled me to do is set up the camera 
um, and as I said in that video, set up the ring for this lens so that I can quickly change filters uh, without any issues. So what it's meant is I've got all the settings ready because you, on these trips, you don't have an awful lot of time to an exploring area. I think we've got probably about an hour and 20 minutes here, which is probably the longest we've had. So, you know, you've got to get as much ready as you can. So that's what I'd advise you to do. And then it's really just a case of trying to make the best of what you've got. Um, you know, try not to take everything that everybody else has taken. What I'm doing with this shot, I'm shooting at f8, four second exposure. So I've got the 10 stop filter on here, um, just to slow the water right down, just to make it a little bit def different. As I say, I like the autumn colours. Ideally, I would have liked to have been probably 10 metres lower down level with the water. That's how I normally like to shoot. But obviously, you know, you can't do that when you're in an area that is all roped off and you know this is where you go basically so I uh, hope you like this image I'll stick it up now So we're at the Semfoss, is it Semfoss? Scarfoss. Sophos, we're at the Scarfoss. Sof Scarfoss Falls today, as you can see behind me. Um, it's not an ideal photography location when you come on a trip. Obviously, you can see the problem. Uh, when you're shooting something like this, sometimes you do want maybe one person in to give the thing some sort of scale, but there's thousands of people today. And if, what I've tried to do is take um, a really really long exposure so by sticking a load of uh, filters on the front to darken the scene down and shooting at f16 I've managed to get a 120 second exposure which if you've got people moving what tends to happen is they disappear from your picture um, but obviously there's a lot of people taking images as well so they stood still for a long period of time and it, it's not really working but We've got some sort of image, um, and I'll stick that up on the screen now. As I say, if you're going to come and do something like this, you've really got to come either late in the evening or early in the morning when all the bus and coach tours have gone, which obviously we're on one of those today. And again, I've found myself doing what I would consider fine art photography. In other words, quite minimalist, long exposure, just to really get something out of this scene. It's quite a pastel colour to the sky today. I was hoping we're going to get a little bit more colour, but we haven't. Um, so yeah, we've had about 40 minutes here, so time to take a couple of shots. Been wiped out by the tide once, um, which ruined the shot, but luckily didn't wet my feet, although it tried. So yeah. The shots I've been taking up have been focused on these pinnacles behind me. Um, really just trying to isolate them and then use the beach, uh, the blackness of the beach with the whiteness of the tide coming in just to create a little bit of contrast. As I say, with a long exposure, probably I've been doing 60 second exposures today. Um, use the magnetic filters again. So I've had, I've been actually stacking three, which I never thought I'd do. I've had the shit, here we go. getting wiped out again so um, one of the hazards why you need water waterproof boots that's not locked, locked it's not shut up so yeah 60 second exposures we'll try again 60 second exposures um, three fil uh, filters, magnetic filters attached. So the ND6, um, the 10 stopper and the uh, CPL as well, um, just to get that 60 second exposure. And I think they've come out really well. So yeah, let me know what you think. Right, 
hello all. Well, I'm going to make this my last um, piece of filming, actually, from Reykjavik. Um, I don't know how this hodgepodge of a um, vlog is going to go together. It's been a really extraordinary week. Um, it's absolutely fantastic place to visit and we've had a fantastic holiday. We've done loads of stuff. Um, I've been horse riding, which I've never done before. So yeah, some really, really fantastic memories. Um, photography wise, it's been eye opening, I would say. Um, I feel like I've achieved some reasonable images. Uh, sometimes I've had to think out of the box to get them um, a little bit, um, but also um, it's been frustrating at times and you know that's understandable because um, with any holiday like this there's occasion where as a photographer you see something and you want to stop and you want to spend time and you just can't because you're on an organized trip or something like that or um, you know you've just not got the time to do it you're not there at the right time, you want to stay longer so that you can wait for the right light, etc. All these things become a problem. Um, but what it has made me realise is that I want to come back and do a purely photography trip, so I'm hoping to do that next year. Um, it's absolutely fantastic, and as I sit here now talking to you, um, you probably won't be able to see this, but out over the harbour, We've got the Northern Lights again. I've just been here photographing them. They've been absolutely fantastic this week. And to say you can get them this, this vivid in the centre of Reykjavik is absolutely fantastic. At the minute, there's what I think they call the peace light shooting straight up into the sky. And earlier on tonight, I had the Northern Lights sort of snaking around the peace light. It looked absolutely fantastic. So any images or film I've got of that, I'll put up at the end of this video, but I hope you've enjoyed it. As I say, I've, it's been difficult doing a vlog because it's been so broken up over the week and I've just tried to add little bits in. Um, certainly what I would say to you, Iceland, a fantastic place to visit. You wouldn't be disappointed. Whether you do it as a holiday or purely as a photography trip, it's up to you. If you do it as a holiday and you're a dedicated photographer, you may find that you have some frustrations, but um, well worth a visit. I'll leave that decision up to you. Anyway, I'll see you next time and I'll leave you with some, uh, some more Northern Lights images. See you later. Mm -hmm.